should pay for tariff-free access to the United Kingdom single market. The bus fight between Tories over cash for access to the European single market rumbled on this week. But it isn't just Europe that's causing beef between the Blues. I'm Bob Neil. I am I know an MP for Bromley and Chislehurst. Bob Neil called on Chris Grayling to resign after he ruled out a Transport for London takeover of suburban rail services. Well, I think he has compromised his position and he should resign. Is he right to accuse Mr Grayling of prioritising party politics over the interests of commuters? And what about those old arch-rivals, peers and MPs? Baroness Boothroyd didn't hold back this week in condemning past Prime Ministers for appointing any old riffraff to the upper house. The repeated abuse of Prime Minister's powers of privilege is as plain as a pike staff. The abolition of their untrammeled power is long overdue. Be gone, I say, and I hope Theresa May takes note. Thank you very much. And what about the fall of Rome? I doubt the Romans would have cared very much which side you cheered. Historian Mary Beard and Brexiteer Aaron Banks had a Twitter bust up over that age old question this week. I don't love anyone, you're not just anyone. Rock and roll bad boy Peter Doherty has had a few bust ups in his time, so are they ever worth it? And Peter Doherty is with us now. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Have you had lots of bust ups? Um. Yeah, a few, I suppose, yeah. I think I've become more diplomatic over the years, I think. <laughs> like, um, As you get older. Yeah. Do you think bus stops are good, though? They, 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 do you think they clear the air? <sighs> I don't know. Did you say something about me once in Parliament? You remember don't that? Don't think so. No? Anyway, sure. Let's stick to bus stops. Yeah, this is, this is the kind of thing, isn't it? Someone says something that offends you, what do you do? You, uh, you absorb it, you get offended, and it dissolves inside you, or it just eats away at you and you have to react. And you think the bus stop helps to kind of clear it out? Well, no, it just adds to the, the long-term resentment, you know? Yeah. Because if you've got, like, a genuine chronic disagreement between two people, husband and wife, and they have a bus stop, as you call it, um, it's just adding to the, the negativity, isn't it? Have you had bus stops that you've regretted? I'm actually a peaceful fella who's not wasn't all that good at fighting, but... Because bust-ups don't have to be violent. OK, well, what, most what, of them what are we're not, saying a really bust-up is, then? Well, lots of bust-ups is you find I have a confrontation with somebody, you find I've wanted to say this for years, I don't like the way things are going, and so yeah, on. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it was, yeah. Is that what, that's what you've done? You you were in the, um, uh, performed at the Bataclan, and as I understand it, you, you, you performed there with someone that you'd had a, a bust up with someone from the Libertines before, but you came back and performed together again. Yeah, it took him three weeks, you know, to mop up the blood <laughs> from uh, the bus stop. It's not funny, is it, really? No, well, not from the bus stop. Yeah, it is funny because I'm sure. That, oh, oh, you. Oh, sorry. I thought you. I'm sorry. I thought you meant the yes, bus yes, stop, no. not the. Ba sorry, I didn't mean to realize you were talking about the Bataclan. I thought you meant the bus stop. It took you three weeks to do it. When, Did, Carl, what, when I, Carl's face came apart, that was him. For he fell over onto his sink because he slipped up. Right. But was it what had happened at the Bataclan, which was such a horrible, terrible event? Did we were, that help we, you to we, come we, together we, again? I didn't play that badly. No, did that help you come together again? Uh, I was amazed that he turned up. It was a surprise and, uh, yeah. But it's been a gradual thing, you know, over the last couple of years, coming together for... Well, we offered a lot of money to come together initially and then uh, starting to write together again and, mm. like, tentatively he's... Just starting to trust me a bit more, I think, because... Did you regret the original bust-up? <sighs> Honestly, I still haven't been able to, to, to uh, what's the word, process it. In fact, after the Bataclan gig, uh, we had a bit of a bust-up. Oh, really? Again? Yeah. Okay. I think I, oh, called, well. I, think I called him a racist. And, oh, uh, oh, that I, usually I, works. I offered him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on the cobbles. Which oh, no. Is, you know, where I got that expression from, Manchester, probably. And uh, I'm really embarrassed about that, yeah, but I thought you were going to wheel him out at some point. Mm. No, we've not been able to find him. Uh, maybe he's frightened to come on. What's the biggest bust-up you've had? Gosh, I don't know, really. I, 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 I don't think that it's been a big part of my life, really. I mean, I mean obviously, I've had political disagreements with people. I, yeah, I, that's I, different. I've been called a bastard. I've been, 
you know, in, in factions and taking different points of view. They're actually a bust up. I can't really. Those of you in a bust up? Not professionally, you know. I guess no. we used to have big, you know, sorry, mum, dad. You know, we, yeah. m my family was very much get it out and then everything was fine. So I grew up learning that you could say what you thought, have a row, and everybody loved each other, and it was fine in the end. And actually, I think, in politics, it's not usually big bust-ups. What's awful are the backstabbing behind-the-scenes briefing. I'd much rather you had a bit of a Barney just out there, cleared the air, and got on with it. It's all the stuff in the papers that I think is really horrible and one yeah. of the nastiest things about politics. Yeah, have you had many bust-ups? Yeah, quite a few, actually. Yeah? Yeah in my nature. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen now, don't <laughs> no, worry. No, no, I know. The lad, the <laughs> I'm going to calm everything. There was something that you just showed, I think, earlier, I was watching it in the other room, about uh, tensions arising and bust out when there's a lack of leadership, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't know who it was that said that. And then they all, uh, uncontrollable. Anyway, we've run out of time. Thank you. You're on doing well on tour. Yeah, we're all right, yeah. Great. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Now, that's your lot for tonight, folks, but not for us. We're heading to Lulu's for the This Week Person of the Year Awards with all the glitz and glamour of Jeremy Corbyn's potting shed. Mm. It's bound to be a night to forget. Michael and Liz were both eliminated, as usual, by the popular vote, and the runner-up was, of course, Molly the dog, even though she's not a person. But with blonde buffoonery all the rage this year, there could be only one winner. Nighty-night, don't let the bojo blunders bite. <laughs> I would certainly like to see demonstrations outside the Russian embassy. Life expectancy in Africa has risen astonishingly as that country has entered the global economic system. Thank, thank this you. Is, this is part of the That's fantastic. <laughs> it's going well. It's, it's going well, John. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, think, I think we got through that one all right. Who's your... Who's it what? It's time we snapped out of the general doom and gloom about the result of this election and the, the collective Windsor armour. Can Boris Johnson stay on message for a full four days?